Hello everyone. Today I'd like to start by dropping this deck of cards on the floor. If I left the room right now and came back a decade later, the pile would still be disordered on the floor. It would not have gone back to the stacked deck. Why? The second law of thermodynamics established with ample experimental evidence, governs the change in a closed system over time. It states that within such systems, the degree of disorder, also known as the entropy, will always increase. Another way to state the second law is that the entropy of the universe increases in the course of any spontaneous change. Of course, in thermodynamics, the universe is comprised of the system and its surroundings. Because of the second law, a gas will expand to fill the void. Gas atoms do not spontaneously gather in a corner of a room. The always increasing disorder occurs because of the tiny amounts of heat which is slowly exchanged with the surroundings. We can represent this tiny amount of heat as delta Q, where Q represents heat. The equation for the second law states that in a closed system, the change in the entropy represented by ds must always be greater than the tiny amount of heat divided by the temperature at which the transfer of heat is taking place. This applies to all processes which are considered irreversible. In fact, this applies to all real processes since fully reversible processes are strictly theoretical in nature. A Frenchman known as Sadie Carnot studied the requirements to do work in what is known today as the Carnot heat engine. This led to another thinking about the second law of thermodynamics. Let's go over the basics of his ideas, which essentially involved building a heat engine which could do work. Carnot recognized three aspects of every engine. First, they must have a high temperature source of heat. Second, they must convert that heat into work, like the piston we built when discussing the first law. And third, they must have access to a heat sink. That is, there must be some part of the surroundings which have a lower temperature. If you were an engineer, you would care about the efficiency of the engine you designed. Efficiency E can be defined as the ratio of the work produced, W, related to the total heat absorbed, Q. If all the heat in a system could be converted into work, the efficiency would be 1. A typical gasoline engine has an efficiency of only about 25 to 50 percent. Even the best engines have much lower efficiencies than one. Sadie Carnot made an amazing discovery about heat engine efficiency. He found that efficiency was related only to the temperature of the heat source and the sink. The efficiency of an engine is equal to one minus the temperature of the sink divided by the temperature of the heat source. That was a truly remarkable finding. The key to an efficient engine is not solely in the temperature of the heat source, but more importantly, in the temperature of the sink. If you could run your engine with a heat sink that remained at absolute zero, you could have perfect efficiency. In any case, if your engine could run with a very cold heat sink, it could be much more efficient. Carnot's work implied something else. If the surroundings of an engine did not exist, the engine would stop. At least some of the heat energy must be lost to the surroundings. And this becomes a statement of the second law. No cyclic process is possible in which heat is taken from a hot source and converted completely into work. This statement was first proposed by William Thompson, and this heat loss is why processes are never fully reversible. William Thompson would later be known as Lord Kelvin, after whom the temperature scale is known. We will learn more about Lord Kelvin when we discuss the third law of thermodynamics, but for now remember, if you don't transfer heat into a sink, you cannot do work. The second law was stated another way by Rudolf Clausius. Heat cannot pass from a body at low temperature to one at higher temperature without an accompanying change elsewhere. This outlines the principle behind a refrigerator. We must do work on the system and send heat into the surroundings in order to cool our food and in doing so reverse the natural course. In the end, Clausius is telling us that entropy of the universe is trending towards some maximum value, and this is a way of expressing the second law. This is often referred to as the heat death of the universe. Clausius' statement is also preventing perpetual motion machines of the second kind. Here is a quick recap. 
The second law is reminding us that in nature, hot objects send their heat into cooler surroundings, a reality familiar to everyone. We can only reverse the process if we do work, like when we use a refrigerator for instance. The disorder in a closed system must always increase due to a loss of the tiny heat to the surroundings. And finally, work can only be done when heat is transferred into a cooler heat sink. If you enjoyed this video on the second law, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.